you learn pretty quickly that if you're going to go out and write your name illegally on walls that aren't yours, you shouldn't write your real name. I like to call it my nom de can. But I stumbled across the word gonzo. When I read the definition, I was like, yo, unorthodox, outside the lines, uh, crazy. It was describing me as a person. It was describing my art. To be a productive member of society, you have to wear many hats. I would like to say that, you know, I am an artist, but I also enjoy bringing people together. Instead of wearing uh, a million hats, I wear a 10 gallon hat. I am Gonzo247 here in H-Town. I, I consider all of Houston my home. I was born and raised in the East End, so that definitely has a special place in my heart. The East End was pivotal in my life as an artist. I grew up knowing nothing about art, and the only thing that I knew was this mural by Leo Tanguma that he painted in 1973. I just knew inside of me that one day it would be awesome to, to be able to create something on this scale. It was probably around 1979, 1980, somewhere around there. And I'm driving with my dad and he, you know, he's driving, I'm tuning the radio. And all of a sudden I heard this music coming through the speakers that I had never heard before. Uh, it turned out it was this new thing called rap music. That, that's the first time I heard music that I really felt was made for me. You know, it spoke to the urban youth. Rap introduced me to the hip hop culture and graffiti is the visual language of hip hop. I was the kid with the can of spray paint and writing my name on everything as many places as I could. But when I turned 17, I found that graffiti art was, was what I wanted to do and pursue. And people weren't really trying to understand that there was this artistic component with, with, behind a spray can. I had to slowly change the perceptions of what people thought of when they heard spray paint, graffiti, and art. I came out of the shadows and instead of being incognito, like most graffiti writers are like, you know, you don't want to show your face. That's like taboo. But in order for people to understand what it was, I think they needed a face to connect with it. And you know, people fear the unknown. So when something just pops up, it's intimidating. But if I can say, yo, I'm Gonzo, and I, I do these graffiti pieces, and slowly people started to see that there was talent. The Houston is Inspired mural, I think it really helped push my name beyond just the circle of people that were into what I was doing. Thankfully, you know, as soon as I was done with it, it grew wings on its own. Doors were already open, but I think this wall really helped just take the doors off the hinges. Seeing Leo's mural deteriorate. I think everyone that I knew as an artist growing up that was inspired by that mural, we all had that same idea of like one day, man, it has to come back to life. To come full circle and be commissioned by the county and be able to work with Leo uh, to be his hands and, and help him to restore the mural. It was beyond an honor. I think as long as I'm alive, I'll still be doing something creative. Art is who I am, art is what I do, and I think that's what I'm gonna continue to do until I am no more. And if it wasn't for the East End, I, I'm not sure I would have found that catalyst to, to make me who I am today.